Well, this is uh, just a short video on the statute of limitations, which your assignment for week uh, two, session four. Uh, just kind of uh, giving you a little bit of background on this. I think there's a lot of material that you can read, but I want to hone in on some things that I think are important. One of the things is that the uh, primary consideration here for a lot of this civil procedure is for tort cases. I mean, honestly, yeah, the rules of civil procedure apply to contract cases, and I've seen that some of you have been actually responding with assignments and so forth about uh, contract cases, but a lot of these are just pretty cut and dried. I mean, let's face it, you either owe the money or you don't. Uh, you're going to file bankruptcy or you aren't. Uh, and, you know, basic rules, six uh, years for uh, some simple things, oral contracts and things like that. Uh, ten years for more formal contracts for uh, um, more expensive property and some things like that. Anything involving real estate. Also, um, the other thing is that um, there is potential there for a waiver of some of your rights by contract. For example, your, even your right to sue in a contract, regardless of the statute of limitations, sometimes you've got to be real careful about the fine print because it can shorten a statute in some uh, places. It can also uh, require you to go through arbitration before you can file a lawsuit. So that, there's a lot of considerations there that you want to look at. But really, I think for purposes of really all of the important parts of civil procedure, the statute of limitations for torts is a primary consideration. So what you want to do and I'm going to give you a couple questions to work on if you pay attention to my video. One thing that I want you to do is find some neighboring states and, and check on what their statute of limitations is for a tort action. Let's say you have a car wreck on your way home from Kentucky uh, and you've gone down to one of the lakes down in Kentucky and gone boating and someone hits you down there. Well, when can you bring a suit? A lot of people mistakenly believe that that is the same everywhere. In Indiana it's basically two years. Uh, and so what about Kentucky though? Is it the same or is it something different? Uh, also, uh, look at some, some other states. Just give me some uh, random states that you come up with and tell me what is the statute of limitations for torch. Now, I mean, you know, you can look this up in LexisNexis. You can probably just Google on it to tell the truth. But it's a pretty important, and it can you know, can really bar you from bringing a lawsuit. Uh, you can sue anybody at any time for anything, but your case will be thrown out by dismissal or uh, summary judgment if you violate the statute of limitations. So it's critically important. Another concept I wanted to bring up is the idea of what about the statute of limitations for civil rights violation. That's a federal action and we've talked some about federal cases. How do we determine the uh, statute of limitations for federal actions? Well here again I think a lot of times the cases I've read the federal court says well we're going to use the uh, procedural rule for the state statutory rule uh, for torts and apply it to civil rights cases. So uh, in Indiana, for example, that would be two years, where in some other cases it might be three, and still other cases it might be one year. So these are critically important. You need to look at this. It's, 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 it can end a case if you wait too long to file a lawsuit. And even there on hangs a tail. I mean, I was involved in a case one time where the lawyer miscalculated the statute of limitations. Uh, it's just a calendar thing. He just picked the wrong day and he was a day late, uh, literally and truly a dollar short because it ended up that he had malpractice. So it can be very important in your office that if you're cataloging things, uh, paralegals are really responsible for keeping track of deadlines. and So this is a very important job for paralegal is to make sure that your office does not violate a statute of limitation. So one of the most important things uh, that you can do to keep your firm out of trouble is keep accurate records of dates and deadlines and when these things have to be done. Final word and then I'll be done with this presentation today and that is 
In addition to the statute of limitations, it's important to consider that in some cases, like let's say that you get hit by a snowplow on a wintry day and a snowplow uh, damages your car, causes great injury to you, uh, well, what, what special circumstances can apply if it's a government? You want to sue the government. You want to sue the county for hitting you with a snowplow. Well, there's a further statute here. It kind of comes out of the old sovereign immunity statutes. And basically what it says is that you have a duty to file a tort claim notice within 180 days. If you violate that rule, then you're just out of luck. Uh, this is the kind of thing you might see on a test, so it's really important to remember that that 180 day limit applies to tort claims to be filed against government. So, um, let's say you want to sue a policeman again in uh, Indiana, you got to file that tort claim in a timely manner before 180 days expire. Now there is one exception to that, and that is that you have 180 days after the 21st birthday no, I'm sorry, got to back that up. 180 days after the 18th birthday of a minor. Old rule used to be 21. Now, so what ends up happening, let's say a 13-year-old gets hit by a police car. And uh, parents just say, well, I don't want to bother with it. And then the child is now 18 and, and is uh, wheelchair bound and finds out that could have sued the policeman for hitting him while he's riding his bike. Well, he has six months after his 18th birthday to hire his own lawyer, file a tort claim notice, and then bring a lawsuit within two years after his 18th birthday. So the rule for minors is a little bit different. We'll do some deeper investigating. I've been seeing some little short paragraphs uh, in some writing assignments, and that's just not going to get it. That's not good enough. I mean, we well, have to see that you've done some in-depth research on the subject of statute limitations. Tell us what you found out and then share it in the discussion board just like I'm doing right now. So very important, very critical. Uh, tell us what you think and, and share it with your friends.